Good morning. I'd like to welcome you this morning to our daily devotion time. As we gather around our tables or uh, just sitting in our den, having a cup of coffee this morning and opening up our Bibles, going to our quiet room and just take your Bible and spend a little long time with God. We're studying in the book of First John chapter 3. And we, we finished the seven tests of how that we can know that we know God. And now we come into the passage uh, that starts here in the third chapter of John and goes all the way through the 21st verse of the fourth chapter uh, in the proof that you really love God. And, and John provides us here in this context six different tests, tests that we can uh, know that we truly love God. Today we want to look at verse number two of the third chapter. Uh, and before we get into that, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that Sister Wanda made it through surgery uh, late yesterday evening and that she uh, has done well through surgery. We pray, God, that you would just give her strength and give her courage. Father, grant her the grace she needs to uh, have a speedy recovery. Lord, be uh, present with her, Father. And Lord, for all that you do in her life, we will honor you for it. Be with our church family. Lord, that may our entire, entire church family, God, look to you, rely upon you. May every one of our church family, Lord, desire, have a burden to have a greater relationship with you today than they had yesterday. And Lord, as we start our Thursday morning, I pray, Father, that you would just open our eyes that we would start with you, number one. Right now, we, we want to start out this day with you. And we want to end this day with you. Lord, I pray that may we just immerse ourselves in who you are in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, here he's, verse number two, he makes this great declaration. Beloved, now, Right now, are we the sons, that is, the children of God? Is it not that we shall be God's children? We are already, already God's children. If we have trusted and given our lives to Jesus Christ, we are now the children of God. Beloved, now, now. We are the sons of God. Now we know what we are now, but it does not yet appear what we shall be when Christ shall appear. Now the contrast here is emphatic. We know what we are now. We are the children of God, but we do not know what we shall be like when Christ returns. I think Oliver Green uh has an excellent statement on this point, and I want to share that with you this morning. He says, what shall we be hereafter is not fully revealed, but we know that we are the sons of God now, and that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of his dear son. We shall be like him. What is involved in this tremendous declaration, we do not fully know now. And even if God had seen fit to explain it to us, we would not be able to understand it with our poor, limited, finite minds. Now, why do I say that? The scriptures tells us that after his resurrection, Jesus ascended the Father, then returned to earth again, perhaps in a matter of seconds. He entered a room where all doors were closed and the windows were locked and appeared in the midst of his disciples. He invited them, behold my hands and my feet. That is, it is I myself. 
handle me, see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and he did eat before them. Now, we cannot understand a body, a personality like that. We cannot comprehend such a tremendous truth with these finite minds. Therefore, God did not explain in detail what it would mean to be like Jesus. We will just wait and let him show us in that glorious resurrection morning and how, what a morning that'll be. So now let's look at it. We shall appear to be like him for we shall see him as he is. Now God is light. Therefore, when we first see God face to face, his light will be transmitted to us and we shall become light even as he is light. Now the believer is to be made just like Christ, conformed to his very image. Now this means that believers shall be like Christ in person and in character. Believers shall possess a perfect body and being. Uh, Paul writes about this in 1 Corinthians 15. Believers are chosen to be holy without blame before him eternally. He hath predestined us to adoption forever. Uh, Paul wrote, and as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now, this is a precious thought. It is more than just a general idea that believers are to be like Christ. It is a definitive idea. The idea that what Christ is, believers shall be. The scripture says in Romans 8, he is a son. So believers are sons. The scripture also says in Philippians, he was in the form of God. So believers shall be in the form of God. The believer is to have a form just like the image of Christ. Resemble him in perfection as much as his very image is stamped with perfection. Now, the whole precious ideal is that Jesus Christ took the believer. And he purified and exalted him. Therefore, the believer, you and I, if we surrendered our lives to, to Christ, is to partake of the purity and the holiness of Christ. Now, this much is known about the body that we shall receive. It will be a body just like the body that Jesus Christ has. This is made abundantly clear by the glorious promises of Scripture. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself? Now we see things of this nature in, in Philippians 3, in Matthew 13, Romans 8, Colossians 3, Revelation 22. We shall be conformed to the very image of his son. We shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Now the body of the believer is to undergo a radical change just as the Lord's body was radically changed. Several times, or excuse me, several changes <clears throat> are promised uh, the believer here. The body will not be corruptible, but incorruptible. We see that in 1 Corinthians 15. It, that is the earthly body, is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. Now, our earthly body is corruptible. Our resurrected body will be incorruptible. Corruptible means that our body's age, Man, I'm feeling it. Deteriorate. I feel that. Die, decay, decompose. But our heavenly bodies, man, radically different. 
They shall be incorruptible, never age. Man, can you imagine? Now, I'm 62, so I'm not an old, old man, but my body's not 25 anymore. Can you imagine never to age? I'm arthritis, man, in the, I'm, I'm stiff this morning. It's, it's hard for the hands to work well for a while. Sometimes I, I, I have trouble standing up straight when I first get out of bed in the mornings. But never age, never deteriorate, never die, never decay, never decompose. Whew, man, that's going to be awesome. They will be transformed and never perish. They will be completely free from defilement, depravity, death, and decay. Now the body will not be a body of dishonor but a resurrected body of glory. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, it, it is the body sown in dishonor, but raised in glory. Now our earthly body is buried in dishonor. Resurrected body will be raised in glory. Our body is dishonorable and nothing shows the body's dishonor any more than its death and burial. Every human body is ultimately shamed and disgraced, degraded, deprived of all of it, of all it has. Every human body is doomed to become nothing more than a handful of dirt. Now think about it. Nothing can be any more dishonorable than to take the wonderful mechanism and beauty of a man's body and see it become nothing more than dirt. Yet that is exactly what happens, but not the resurrected body. Now the human body will be transformed into a body of glory. Glory means to possess, to be full of perfect light, to dwell in the perfect light. Brilliant, splendor, brightness, luster, magnificence, dignity, majesty, and grace of God himself. The body will not be a body of weakness, but a body of power. Paul again wrote there in 1 Corinthians 15, sown in weakness, raised in power. Our earthly body is buried in weakness. But I want to tell you something, that resurrected body is going to be raised in power. While on earth our body is ever so weak, subject to sickness, disease, a host of other infirmities and limitations. And as we age, those limitations become more and more. And eventually it becomes so weak that it dies. In death, the human body is utterly powerless, helpless, devoid of any strength and capability whatsoever. In death, the human body is so powerless it is unable to lift a single finger. It can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the resurrected body, yes, Lord, how is raised in this power. It shall have a mind and a body filled with strength and might and health and authority and control. It will be a perfect body. Never subject to disease, accident, or suffering. You know, I think of all the times that I've had to have stitches is, man, there won't be any more of that. There won't be any more trips to the emergency room. There won't be any more doctor's office visits. There won't be any more visits to the surgeon or, ske or schedulers for surgery. Won't need it anymore. It will be a body so powerful that it will be able to control its acts and circumstances around it, all for good. So let's think about this thing. The believer, you and I, that have surrendered our lives to Christ, we can find great comfort and hope in God's love as it is expressed in our eternal transformation eternal as the world shakes around us this i know god's plan for richard 
God's plan for you is unshakable. Absolutely unshakable. I believe it was 1995. It's been a few years ago now. There was this devastating earthquake in Kobe, Japan. Thousands, and I mean thousands of people lost their lives. Billions of dollars of damage was done to buildings and roads. It was reported that there was this Christian church in Kobe also destroyed. But in its courtyard, there was this statue of Christ that remained perfectly erect. Now, word of the statue's survival spread across Japan. And as people came to examine it, the statue became a symbol of hope to a people whose world had fallen apart. Now, there is a very practical point in this story. No matter how shaky that it gets here on this earth, one day every believer shall be like Christ, incorruptible, never decaying, nor deteriorating or dying, but we will be transformed from brokenness to stability, from death to life, from sorrow to joy. Now, when your world gets shaky, Remember the glory that awaits you in heaven. Now, as we ponder on our scripture today, we go through our, our work day, school day, what, whatever your day is planned out. I want you to think about some things. How can God's promise for the future? We shall be like him. How can that make a difference in your life right this second, this day. And then I'd like to follow up with that. Is it making a difference in your life? And I'd like for you to think about, you know, we realize that there's all kinds of trials and temptations, evil, cor corruption in this world, but what can you do to stay focused on Christ's promise to you? How can you share the glorious promise with an unbeliever that you may encounter this day? I want you to ponder on those things today. Let's go through this day. We're starting this day out with Jesus. We're going to end this day with Jesus. And Father, we, we just want God to grant us some opportunity through this day that we can share Jesus. Because, man, there's a great love here for him, aren't there? Man, the, the love of God, it is real. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being able to unpack some of your word. Father, I pray for those that are listening and sharing in a devotion time this morning, that you would just bless them and strengthen them to encourage them, to uplift them. And as we go throughout this day, Lord, may doors of opportunity be open. Continue to be with Sister Wanda, Lord, and Sister Linda, she uh, approaches her surgical date. Uh, Father, I pray that thy will would just be in their lives. Thank you for all the blessings that you've been blessing Sister Joyce with, continue to give her strength and encourage her and her family. And Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Yahweh, thank you. In Christ's name, amen.